rolling, rolling. The steps have to be retracted. If you don't retract the steps, you kill all the gophers by the side of the road. So if you retract the steps, you pull that up. In. And when you're ready to pull it out, one, two. That's the steps. So it flips up like that and locks into position. Once it's locked into position, it shouldn't be able to fall down. So you light the stove. At the top, there's a button called light. And then you push the spark. It should come on. And each one of these is the same. The middle one is red. And now the wind just blew it out. So none of these are on. Actually, the t I turned the tank off. It's our imagination. We're going to imagine right around here is the campsite connection. So you'll have a connection for your water hose and you'll have a connection for the electricity. And there'll be a big disconnect. Kluk. That was me turning off the, the power. Now we're ready to hook up the electricity. This is hooked up, but this is where the, it connects in. And uh, I'm loosening it now. So this video will be for loosening it and connecting it. Always have the disconnect on. There it is. You stick it on, tighten down this little, I don't know what this is, a little nut. Make sure it's tight. It's cross threaded. Make sure you don't cross thread it like I just did. And then you go to the other end of your wire right here. This is just an adapter that you use if you don't have the proper 220 power, but the campsite will have this, the 220 power. This is me plugging it into the campsite. This is me turning on the switch, clunk. There should be lights in the trailer now. If there's not, go get the campsite director. box are two propane tanks and you only use one at a time so one should always be closed and uh, you start with the one and open the valve up like that left is loose this one should be closed right is tight and now you've got propane in the in the inside the trailer and then you go inside the trailer and try the stove and if the stove is on you've got propane this is door number two. Inside are the wheel chocks. And when you set the trailer up, you want to put a wheel chock in front and behind. And you just kick them in a little bit to make sure that they're secure. That way the trailer won't move. Both of the wheel chocks. Okay. Right here, it says city water connection. That's where you hook, you're gonna hook in your hose. This hose will be in door number three. Take it out, hook it up there. The other end, you'll hook up to the connection back over to our imaginary box right here. The connection. And then open the water. Just check that it's not leaking all over the place. We go inside the trailer and test the water out. And if it's going, ready to turn on your hot water heater because you shouldn't turn on the hot water heater until you know that the water is under pressure in the system because it has no water to heat. Uh, so if the first thing you do is check the sink after you hook it in, you got water, now you're in business. Now you can go to your next step. The very first thing you want to do when you uh, take the awning down is you want to grow, if you're me, you want to grow about two more feet. But since that's not going to happen, just go up here and unlock it. Here's that. Right up here on top of the awning, it's just to roll down. So there's a little break. That locks it up, this takes it down. The other thing you have to do is disconnect these two clips. And you disconnect them by pushing them in and towards each other. And now this, this one's loose. And there's one on the other side also. Little action shot running. This one is also disconnected now. And now the awning can come down. And you just you can pull it down like that. There's actually a strap over here. Once you can reach the strap, you can out the strap. So 
now you can have very short people visiting you or people who can do the limbata. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But to adjust the uh, height of it, there's two lock bars here. And you can slide this out. And again, you have to kind of do it one piece at a time like that. Not over here. Put a little farther. Back over here. I'm getting a workout. <laughs> there we go. And maybe this is a little bit more because of the perfectionist. Now the awning is spread out, and to retract it, you have to go back over to this little break, which now even short people can reach. You set it to the roll up position, and then you just push this up like that. Oh, yeah, there's a strap going up last time. If we had more time to redo this video, I would have done those lashes first if I did it in the wrong order. Doesn't matter, works. Very important, now that you've done that, if you don't want this to get torn off the trailer while you're going down the road, if you have the steps down and this, you're going to kill gophers and you're going to kill birds. Because this thing will come flying off. It has to be locked. So you have to come over here and push these brackets in like that. It has to snap into place. And you got to test it and see that it's, this is not going to fly off. Because if it does, if this isn't properly locked, this whole tarp is going to come flying off. And, put on the and on this other side as well, click like that. And again, you got to test it, make sure it doesn't fly anywhere. Birds are safe, gophers are safe. Right. right here, these both of these switches are for the water heater. The one here with the little flame is for the propane. And the one over here with the little lightning bolts is for the electrical. Now, when you're using a lot of hot water, if you've got a lot of people in the trailer, you want to have both of these on because the electrical sometimes can't keep up, but the uh, propane one always will. So it'll use both of those power. So if you got, you're going to have a lot of people turn them both on. Normally, if you're hooked into the electricity and you're not using it, a lot of hot water, you can just use that. And this is how you turn them off. While we're here, we're going to do one other thing. This box right here tells you um, about your holding tanks. There's a holding tank for gray water. And there's a holding tank for black water. Gray water is just uh, all your sinks and your shower. And black water is from your blech. And that's, uh, if you have, there is a fresh water tank. You don't need it if you're hooked into the city water. But it's a fresh water tank if you're traveling, you can fill it up and it'll tell you how full that tank is when you push these buttons. Because there's nothing in all three of these tanks. There's, it's not showing anything, but there's three lights. And when you get to the top, you better start doing something about it. And this one on the right is the battery condition. It shows green, it's fully charged. So if you're not hooked up to any power, there's a little bit of power in the battery that will give you um, some service. It'll turn on the lights. It can run this water pump, which you don't need again if you're under, if you have city water, you just leave that off. So that's the switches by the sink. All right, so look at the panel here. Zoom in on that. All right, mm -hmm. so to run the fridge when you have both electricity and it has gas backup, you just set it to on. Okay, the light will come on. Mm -hmm. If you need to run it on gas for any reason, uh, when it's on auto, it will automatically go to gas. If you want to run it just on gas, you set the switching switch over to gas. And this yellow light needs to stay on. And if after 30 seconds it goes off, you have a problem. Maybe the tank's uh, valves aren't, aren't open or something like that. And then of course you can set your switch, your your temperatures here and then for inside the fridge um, there is a way to lock the fridge doors open mm -hmm. you see that mm -hmm. so if for any reason you're not going to use the fridge and you're going to shut it down it locks the fridge doors open so that it doesn't get moldy inside the fridge 
Come to the bathroom. Uh, if you look right around the corner here, you'll see the RV toilet treatment. If you're using the toilet, and I haven't primed it for you, which I don't always do, so make sure that I've told you that I've primed it, then you put one of these uh, bottles in and three gallons or 12 liters of water. That gets the, the toilet all ready for you to do whatever you do in toilets. Please do not use fe feminine hygiene projects, products in this toilet or anything else other than RV paper and these and whatever else goes in there. Okay. Okay. This is the septic drain hose. We use this right here. When you leave the campsite, you have to drain your two tanks. On the left hand side, is the valve for the gray water that's from your think sinks and your shower and on the right hand side don't pull this until you're really ready to pull it and then make sure everything is connected up that is your raw sewage and so be careful about that you lock this onto there's these little nipples that stick out and you lock that on make sure you have a good connection and then on the other end you'll take this piece and you'll there'll be a tank at the at the site wherever you are and you can screw this in so you just screw this piece in and then this goes in here and clips on so that you have a, a tight connection the last thing you want is you want a bad connection when you're doing sewer now this is a little un, a little twisted so I'm gonna untwist it a little bit you want to have your hose as flat as possible because any low spots are going to collect stuff. All right, so this is gonna be inside your tank. You've got this all set up. It's connected, you double check it. Now you're ready to pull your hose. Now it's very important the order you do it in. You wanna pull your raw sewage tap first. And that's all gonna go through there and it's gonna have everything in it that you don't wanna have left over in your hose when you're done. After that, you're going to do your gray, your gray water. And uh, make sure before you do it, if you haven't been using the gray water a lot, make sure you really, it's, it's best while you're still at the campsite to have your whole gray water tank full of water because it'll allow you to flush this hose out and get all the, literally all the crap out of it. So that's the second one. First the sewage, second that. They have a, uh, hoses for rinsing at, at the site where you're going to do this and uh, so oh another important thing before I forget the protective equipment it's not that you want to wear them but you're happier if you do and uh, then you just rinse all your hoses down, make sure you spray the inside of it out, and then it gets stored right here in the back bumper. That comes off like that, and you just slide the hose in there, and the couplings, they get rinsed off and they get stored in door three. This is the crank for the jacks and there's all sorts of different heights of wood. If you've got a little bit uneven and you can use a thinner one or a bigger one, you put that underneath where the jack is going to sit and then you crank this down. Okay. So you don't want to actually lift the trailer up with these jacks. They're not made for that. You just want to get them snug like that and the trailer doesn't move around when you walk around inside. The main jack at the front is the one that you use for leveling it front to back. And inside you'll find a little magnetic uh, leveler that you can just hook onto a straight part of the frame like that. And you can see if you're level. And we're very crooked right now. <laughs> Not that crooked.